Hi, this is Nick, the commentator. I would like to welcome you to Smack Talk RC Podcast with my boys, the camera and Bobby Watts. The commentator. The commentator. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm having a sip of my drink right now. Oh my goodness, this freaking guy. And it's just the middle of the week. It's awesome. Good for you. It's an I'm excuse a- when we record these things to have a cocktail. <laughs> I'm having a nice sip of my water. Yeah, you had one before. I did, but now I'm having water. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Like you said, it's the middle of the day. I got more shit to do. You have to drive. I'm home. Yeah, this is true. I had a, a, a nice light one, and then that's it. But we're here at uh, uh, Casa de Camera, Compound de Camera, and you're gearing up for a new building. Yeah. How you been doing, Bobby? I've been good. I've been good. Been busy as always, working away. Yeah. I don't know. Same shit. Get ready You've to fly. You've been flying? Yeah, been flying. flying a good bit. Mr. Kyle Stacy's coming down this weekend to fly. Oh, he's coming back again. He, he is. was here like last two weeks ago. Two weeks, a few ago. weeks ago. Yeah, he's up in Jacksonville now working for Drone Aviation Corp. Uh, it's a company that I work for part time. Art Hughes works for him. Kyle's working for him now in Jacksonville. So he's not that far of a drive for, from Orlando. So he's coming down and hopefully we'll throw down. Nice. The fucker didn't tell me he was coming. So well, I just I'll asked him. I just asked him about 20, 20 minutes ago. So I guess you're not high enough on the priority list. I'm for not. Him to high, tell you. Yeah, I'm not. But he and I are flying the same machines now. We're, we're I know you we're, guys we're are buddies. You're Mikado people. Now. We, huh, we have a synergy too. Oh, He's got you? a synergy N7, oh, and he okay. just got one. Okay, well that's a good decision. Oh, so what does okay. that mean? We're Mikado people. You're being a hater. No, I'm not. I'm yeah, just, you are. I'm being you're a hating. helicopter guy. You're hating. You're hating. Helicopters without drama. Oh or not helicopters, so this is why today we decided to talk a little bit about events. Yeah, well, you wanted to talk about drama, but I just couldn't do it. Yeah, drama, drama is a good topic. I mean, we could do drama, but the way I think of it is most of our listeners are driving home now or just chilling, and they want to get away from stress. So to hear about us talking about... About like, drama? Yeah, yeah, it would be bad. Yeah, I, no, I, I would have no interest in listening to that. But events is a good one, so let's get into events. So we're going to talk about events. So... I think this is a very important topic because I think a lot of people... Okay, so we've already established that RC helicopters have kind of gone down a little bit. I wouldn't say they have gone down drastically. Some people... Well, some would argue you on that. Well, anybody can argue me, but I kind of know when it comes to the business side of the hobby what the numbers are. I agree agree with you, though. So they have not gone down as much as some people would say that they've gone down. But they don't have the same popularity and the same, like, wow factor, the same um excitement level or the same you know the same numbers that they had let's say three four five years ago right definitely no I agree. Doubt. but they're but i think that events are very important because events are a big driver of the overall promotion of the hobby in itself so in other words like um, you know, you could do as much as you want with doing videos and watching, you know, pro pilots on, on YouTube fly their helicopters or, you know, people can still go back and watch our old videos from Smack Talk RC where we taught people how to fly or, you know, picked on a topic and explained it and got really, te- got, you know, right. it, it went technical into this, uh, you, you know, a, a certain topic. Sure. But when it comes down to it, I don't care when you go online, you go to Facebook and you go like on Google and you find an ad from A Main Hobbies or Heli Direct or any of the big, you know, experience or any of the big hobby shops. The bottom line is ads are boring, like just a freaking banner with a new promotion or Valentine's Day special and all this stupid <laughs> shit that they're off. doing all the time. What matters, what really pushes the hobby is events, in my opinion. Yeah, agreed. A big promotion. Why? Because the pilots get together, they get to meet each other, they they establish that camaraderie and that friendship, um, and, and, and they also promote directly or indirectly, whether they are... Uh, whether they're, uh, 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 you know, like a, uh, a pro pilot sponsoring the product they represent or whether they're just a normal dude that just went to that event to have fun, they're also indirectly promoting the hobby. Correct. Or the brands they're flying or whatever. They might not be doing it on purpose. We're not talking about promotion here, but we're talking about the overall promotion of the hobby, not of a particular brand. And I think events are crucial when it comes to you know, getting the hobby out there. Just it, it, it's a big group of people getting together and and doing something that really encourages 
and 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 promotes the hobby uh, as a whole. Yeah, I, I think the events. I mean, that's one of my favorite aspects of the hobby. I think we could all kind of agree on that. That having having such big events to look forward to, like the blowout, like the Urcha Jamboree, um, you know, for airplanes, like Joe Null, that you know, these types of Top Gun, these kind of events are. That's one of the best parts of the hobby, honestly, and the amount of people you meet at these events. The amount of and, and then you have all these people get together. So you have helicopter manufacturers, you have yep. servo manufacturers, you have flyberless manufacturers, you have yep. distributors, you have pilots, you have well-known pilots, pro pilots, you have people that write articles in magazines like you know AMA magazine or whatever other magazine there is. Sometimes you have AMA officials themselves show up at these events. It, you have just an average Joe that just joined the hobby, started flying three months ago, and he shows up at the event. And you have all these people that just get together, and there's such a good vibe, and there's so many ways to promote the hobby when all this group gets together. Right. This guy takes pictures. The other guy's writing an article for a magazine. The other guy shows up and does a video. It's just a good way to, to distribute um, content for that... Sure allows us to get the word out when it comes to our RC helicopters. You know what I mean? I think it's great. And and one of the coolest things about the RC heli hobby is that it is small, even in its glory days or whatever. And it's when it's most popular, it's always been really small. So you could have a fun fly where there's only 120 people and the club can fork up enough money to bring the best pilot in the world out. So if you're just starting to fly and you're, you fly at the local field there and, I don't know, Boise, Idaho or something, and uh, you and the club can fork up to bring in the best pilot in the world, then you can really see the like one of the best in the world there at your little field. And it's cool. You know, it's I awesome. feel like there's uh, you know, when we were traveling a lot to some of the smaller events, that was like some of the most fun I had. I some agree. of those little tiny events, you know, I agree. and 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 the fact that you can meet George from Scorpion, you can meet the manufacturers of uh, you know, all the brands that you fly, you can talk face to face. You know, people can talk to you if they fly your BK servos. People can come meet you and say, hey, you know, face with the name. I mm. I think that's a really cool part too that it's small enough. I, I agree. So let's break it down into a few things first. So let's talk a little bit about the different sizes and types. Types. I would of I would classify events as different kinds of events and different for uh, sure sizes. So. You got your little mom and pop, I would call it. I don't mean to be mom rude by pop. this, but mom and pop events. Mm-hmm. Meaning, you know, you're in the middle of the United States or you're in the middle of like a, a relatively uh, unpopulated area, like rural, you know, like uh, For sure. somewhere. And, you know, Wisconsin, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of places like that. North Missouri. Dakota. North Dakota, yes. <laughs> Um, actually, we've been to one in North Dakota, didn't we? No, I no, think no, no. we went to Minnesota. Minnesota. Don't get them confused. Uh, correct. Uh, <laughs> but you know, you have those events that are freaking awesome because you only get anywhere between, I would say, 20, 20 30 to 40 or 50, between 20 and 50 pilots, maybe, I right. guess you could say. Yeah. And you know, you might not have a big manufacturer show up, so you might not get to meet George Van Gansen. You might not get to meet, uh, you know, Nick the commentator Johnson there. Right. Um, you might not get to see a huge display of like, you know, goblins or logos or synergies or gowies, but but yet you you it, it's such an intimate um, experience because you get to almost meet everybody that's there one-on-one, and you get to kind of like interact with those people and go out to the flight line together with some of these guys and get to meet them and spend time with them and learn what they're doing and kind of feed off of each other. And, you know, if I if I spoke as Bert, like, quote-unquote, the pro pilot, which I hate to do, you know, I enjoy it because... <laughs> you love it. Uh, I enjoy it a lot because I get to see what people are doing and it teaches me... Um, a lot. Like, sure. in other words, I like to experience what people like, what people don't like, because it, it gives me an idea as to where the hobby is at and how people are getting that, you know, sort of like that kick out of the whole hobby, you know, the hobby as a whole. Yeah, I think it's it's cool. And usually those and, events are held by like a club. Usually the club member runs it and it's normally like a big club barbecue and that kind of thing. Usually events like that lead from an active club. We've never been to a small event like that that has like a dormant club. Do you agree. agree? So first and foremost, that event needs to be a, like a decent club that there's active members. These guys are into it um, with good leadership, you know. 
And, and, you know, those events are great. If, you know, if you live in Arkansas and there's an event within two hours, or if you live in Missouri and there's an event within two hours, and even if there's only 20, 30 pilots, make the drive. Go out there yep, because agreed. you're going to meet new guys that you might have never met before. Maybe you've seen them on Facebook or you've maybe you've become friends through Facebook because everybody nowadays uh, befriends each other on For Facebook, sure. if you, even if you don't know who you are. But make the trip because once you get to meet that person, put a name, uh, face to the name, um, or name to the face, whatever you call it. Face to you, the name. Face to the name. You you start developing that relationship, which actually like it's actually really cool because you, you, you I mean I've developed some of the best friendships of my life through the heli hobby in itself. I met you in an event, so, so yeah, yeah. We've met. I've met our guest, which we'll talk about him here later, mm -hmm. through the hobby, and he's like one of my best friends. So I mean, the hobby is just awesome. Just take the time to make the trip. For sure. Would I recommend to uh, buy an airline ticket and spend a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars to go to a twenty pilot event? Maybe not. Probably not. But if it's within your range, you know, a couple hour drive, two, three, four hour drive, make the trip and support that club the because the little events are cool. That's that's just awesome. I think we can all yeah. get around. The and not to events. mention, Bobby, like you you nailed it. It's put together by clubs. So on top of the fact that you're supporting the hobby and promoting the hobby and meeting new people and, and creating relationships, you're also supporting that club. And clubs need a lot of help these days. Yeah, clubs, I, think, I think we need to see more of that. I don't really see as many uh, active club events now, do you? I don't really see it. Like, look in Florida, right? Like, the Mulberry lot. Fun Fly went away. Port Charlotte went away. We had Port um, Charlotte in Florida. We had Daytona Mulberry. Went away. We had Daytona. We had Jacksonville went there, away. There were a lot, and now there's nothing. Courtney uh, had an event with That's Todd right. McLaugh. Uh, yeah, uh, Port uh, St. Lucie. Sorry, Todd, for screwing up your last name. Mac, I can't McLaughlin. pronounce it. McLaughlin. Um, they had an event down in Port St. Lucie. The event is pretty much called off, like right. at least for the last year. I think she mentioned she would do it again, but. Yeah, a lot of these events have gone away. So if there's an event near you, support it. Yeah, the, sure. the little events are good. So if we start the little events, so I, I, yeah, I would agree. There used to be a lot of little events. And then kind of next to that are sort of, not the huge big ones, but I would say events maybe around the 100 person mark. Like uh, back at home in Maryland, we had the MHA fun flight. Yeah. And that was usually like 100, 120. And that's a pretty big event for the East Coast. Yeah. And... Um, that was great because you'd get the sponsored guys, you'd get the owners of the the designers of the companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, those those events were great. And for that size event, I would say back in the day, and we'll discuss some of the events that are still around that you got. We encourage you guys to go to. But back in the day, we had Birmingham uh, in the month of Mar month of March, still happening. Big event back in the day. We had Huntsville in, uh, of course, Huntsville, Alabama, end of April, generally mid to end of April. Um, again, pl 100 plus, 150 sometimes back in the day. Big event. Um, we had a Haley Invasion in Virginia, which has been replaced by two separate events that are still happening in Virginia, 100 plus pilots each event. We had Las Vegas Fun Fly, which went on a hiatus and it came back this year. Yep. Um, uh, we had um, Raina Movi, our friend, used to put an event in San Diego, Palomar. I think that has gone away, but I think this last year they did the. Uh, Buzzing, heli buzzing, heli's buzzing the border, which is almost by the border with Tijuana mm -hmm. in Southern California, a little south of San Diego. That kind of came back. That was another big event, 100 plus pilots. So there's some events, not to mention Orlando helicopter blowout, not to mention, of course, Urcha. Those and, are the huge events. And, and those are the say. huge. And then there's others. So I would say there's two kinds. You got your little mom pop i guess quote unquote 30 pilots you know club run events right let's say mom pop two guys at a club get together run the event and then you get the big you know then you get the mid-size like again like the ones we mentioned that take a little bit more collaboration from club volunteers to pull it off and then you have the big ones like you know urcha that take a huge crew to thousand be able to run yeah with a thousand people <clears throat> so if you're driving if you're within three to four hour driving distance from one of these little 30 pilot events make make a trip there now if 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 you want to go to a big event which events bobby do you think we sh they should go to if obviously we're, we're we're speaking to a crowd that is in the united states we could talk a little bit of international events later sure. but well it's it's harder now because a lot of the really popular events that i used to go to that we went to 
have gone away, the, you know, the ones that you've mentioned. But like myself, for example, this year, I can kind of plot ahead. So it's end of February, it would be March by the time this is released. So I would say that the, the go-tos for me, at least this year, would be Birmingham, simply because I love that field with the ditch. It's just fun. Yeah. Um, Urcha, for sure. Blowout, for sure. And then whatever I can hit in between. Those yeah. are just hard because there's not the staples like there used to be. And I might be wrong. I think I am. Uh, hopefully I'm wrong. But like you look at Vegas, I saw, you know, a lot of sponsored guys there. But I don't know how many um, like locals go out to the just, event in Vegas. And But I think out west is a little harder because California is huge, for example. And Nevada's pretty big. I mean, so if, if you're in South Southern California, even to go to an event in Northern California, dude, that's like for us in Florida going to New York. That's a big trip. No, it's not that bad. I think LA to San Francisco is eight like hours. Eight hours. Yeah, 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 eight hours. Okay, so, so Florida, it's like it's like it's Florida like, to like uh, Virginia. No, Florida it's, to Virginia. no, it's like Miami to Jacksonville. It's like South Florida to North Florida. Both extremes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's further. But it's that. still it's still a long way. Still yeah, though. but it just feel it just feels far. So I unfortunately I feel like the big events have kind of gone away, and 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 even the little ones now. Like I I I hate to have a pessimistic view on this, but a lot of the events have just gone away. But you know why I think is because a lot of the people are not traveling and making making the trip to support the event and there's no doubt that we've lost some blood in the hobby like we've lost some pilots to fpv and fpv racing and i think there's been not, an many, overall, not many not many but i think there's been uh, i wouldn't say we've lost existing pilots to fpv we've lost new blood that could have yeah, came yeah, to yeah, helicopters exactly. like that, like the way yes yeah, sorry sorry to interrupt but yeah. I, I feel like that uh I, 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 you just made me think of it like i feel like the events in the last mm, i don't know three years or so whenever you go to an event you see the same exact faces like the same exact faces and it's like dude i just saw you like 600 miles from here we, you know I, I love to hang out with you guys and all and everything but especially at the time when i was selling products or um, displaying a new machine or whatever it kind of doesn't help if it's all a bunch of sponsored people and people who work in the hobby who keep going to the same events together. You were hoping to see new guys, new blood, yeah, like, and you can like help new faces out to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and and, it, and it's kind of a bummer when you travel around and you, it, it's cool to see the same faces. Like, I love the guys that we've met. Like you said, we've met some awesome people. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, let's get some new blood out there. Let's yeah, see, yeah, if yeah. you're listening to this and you've never been to an event, look one up in your area. Go. And that's it's the fun. Whole- and that's the whole point of this this particular uh, podcast episode is we want to encourage you guys to visit, to go to events. Because I think events are a big driver, a big hobby, a driver Absolutely. to our hobby as a whole, as a promotional tool to to grow the hobby and to meet new people and to encourage new people to join the hobby. Yeah. Um, but anyway... Um, we have a guest today. He's been uh, we do. sitting si- you know, next to us, being very quiet and uh, just listening to our bullshit. Our special but, uh, guest. Our yeah. special guest is uh, no stranger to the Orlando Heli blowout. Our special guest is Mr. Scott Huber, everyone. Scott yeah. Huber. Hi, everybody. Scott Huber. How's it going? Scott hey. was the president of the Torches Club here in Orlando, Florida for three years, was it? Yep. Three years. So yeah. this is the funny story. Like I have to share this before we let... St- Scott, get a word in. Here it goes. So this is, the, we, I just talked about this before, right? Like right. a newbie walks into a fun fly and goes like, holy shit, this is fucking awesome. That was me. <laughs> that was Scott. Tell us how you, uh, how you, you told me the story before and I don't remember the details. You somehow were driving down the road and you're like, holy shit, there's like an event or something. Well, no, we were looking for a place to fly, my brother and myself. And we saw a gate open, a little road, and we decided to go down the road and see what was going on, and we bumped into the blowout. Oh, you went during the blowout? Yeah. What are the chances? Was there... W- a was, million to one. Was wow. there a sign out by the gate? Because we didn't even... No, there was use, nothing out there. Was there was nothing. We didn't we were, even put a sign back there back in the day. We had nothing. Yeah, we were just looking for a field. <laughs> and that was <laughs> you one You found of, one. <laughs> yeah, we found one. You found a real A good, very busy one. What are the chances? Holy shit, I didn't know that. Yep. And this this was one of the biggest years, because you might not remember. I know your memory is just as screwed as mine, but it was probably 11 or 12, to th- something like that. It was one of the biggest years, yep. right? Yeah. So there was like I think so. 350 pilots or some shit, or it maybe not packed. quite, but like it was packed, yeah. Yeah, it was. So then when, when you were president at uh, the blowout, did you enjoy that time putting on an event like that? I mean, that 
But putting on an event like that, you you know, you Carrie and Bert put that event on. That's crazy. Actually, I begged Bert. I yelled at Bert. I yelled at Carrie. Let's make it bigger, bigger, bigger. I loved it. Really, all yeah. the hard work that went into it. It was worth every bit of it. Good I I used to Good tell Scott, you. I'm like, fuck, dude, I don't want to do this. Like, this is so much work. But he's like, oh, fuck you, shut up. We'll get it done. We'll get it done. He's just, you know, Scott. He's oh, no, laid he's, back. He's, for he's the, awesome. He's for awesome. you guys that are listening, like Scott is a very laid back kind of guy. He's like, he gets his shit done at his own time. He's good dude. And sometimes he for- procrastinates a little bit. So it might take a little longer to get it done. <laughs> but he gets it done. He does it like he doesn't stress. He's just he's. Well, no all. time for stress. Yeah. Now, I feel like a lot of people out there who maybe have never put on an event before, you had to jump through lots of hurdles with the county, or the two counties, or the two uh, cities. Well, city municipalities, yes. Yeah, city muni- Can you talk about that a little? Because if I'm a guy in the middle of nowhere and I want to put on an event, can you tell us like the kind of stuff you had to do to pull off the blowout? Well, it's actually getting through all of your inspections. Uh, our biggest hurdle for uh, o- the city of Okoy was we had tents, no mm-hmm. walls on any of our tents. Uh, the blowout operates from sunup to sundown, and they had to have lighted exit signs. You're kidding me. No. And I had to actually bring the fire marshal out and show him that there are no exits. All walls are exits. Um. And then they went along with it. <laughs> Welcome to the world of government. Yep, yep, really? But yep. then you had to get special permits that, because wasn't it a certain amount of people? Like if like 300 people or more come, then you got to pull a permit for exactly, it. Or, right. Yes. But if we do a little event, then you didn't have to. Right. Right. Like our uh, small event at Torches, we don't pull permits. There's not enough people. So Scott, like, correct me if I'm wrong, if you're doing a little event, like, and you, you know, you know, I should know this because, you know, basically one of the founders and runners of the blow up but scott has always been my right hand when it came to pulling permits and doing all this kind of stuff if it's a small club so if we have any listeners that have a club and say a president of a club and it's going to be a very small event let's say 30 to 40 pilots or whatever and it's a private property club they don't have to pull a permit do they not i mean we shouldn't we recommend you contact your local city officials because right, right. we're not attorneys and we don't right. know. But in uh, in your opinion, I think you don't have to, right? Uh, if it was a small event, I really wouldn't sweat it. Uh, as long as you're squared away with portalettes, even if, say, an inspector does come in during your event, if you're squared away with, with uh, portalettes, toilets, yeah. uh, there shouldn't be a problem. And, and They'll look the other way. Especially if the club is on, you know, if the club is private property. Like if in other it's words, private like, property, that's different than because we fly off of a uh, city property. City property, right. and that's, that's one true. of the challenges we've had running the Orlando helicopter blowout is the is the the property where our club is, Torches Club, is owned by the city of Winter Garden. Right. But it's within the city limits of another city, which <laughs> is the Okoy. city of Okoy. <laughs> that's so insane. It's very complicated. You have to get permits from one city or permission or authorization from the city that owns the property, and then get the formal permits from the city that has jurisdiction. Over the location of the property, so it's exactly, like it's right. a yeah. cluster of fuck of yep. com- complications. You got to follow your permits when yeah. you get your permission from, say, the people that own the property. You've got to make sure that that permission makes it to the city, so the city won't at the last minute, two days before, say, "Oh, we can't do this." Wow, I remember being at some events where sound and noise was a big problem. Like there was a cutoff time by like ten o'clock. You couldn't right, make yeah, it. Yeah, it's usually ten o'clock. So we have that same. Deal They've the never blowout. hit us with that because we're kind of in the country. But as we get encroached, and yeah. it's more and more and more every week, uh, it would not surprise me if we start hearing about that. Man. And you, you guys would do it the right way, too. You'd go to the local police, and they'd volunteer, wouldn't they? They would set up ships. Or right. would we pay them, maybe? Right. Well, we... Yeah, we pay them. Yeah. We pay them. Yeah. But they set up... I mean, that's, that's a great thing to do. So if you have a big, pretty big event... You know, having a police officer officer there is not a bad idea. Actually, Bert had one of the police officers out front flying. I think I buddy boxed him. Is that was that you that yeah. buddy boxed him? Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah cool was, guy. He'll remember Officer Mullins. Yep, yeah. cool dude. Yep, he was the one who kicked he who shall not be named out of the club. I like him. Yeah, and then and then you have a disgruntled uh, freaking club member that decides <laughs> to be a 
freaking dickhead. Pardon yep. my English. This is not this is not a, a G rated show. Kicked anyway. him out right out of the club. And, he said, "There's the door." Yeah, Bye. and then make some uh, threat, uh, make some phone calls to the fire department and the police uh, department at two a.m. And because our club is owned by one city yet exists in uh, another city, then we get the police uh, officers show up at three yeah. in the morning knocking on uh, on our uh, RV and, 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 and motorhome doors, waking people up and say, you can't be here. Yeah. You all need to leave. Oh, man. <laughs> it was, yeah. Yeah. So there's some drama sometimes. We're not so going to mention any names. Maybe but we'll get uh, Bert's wish to come true and we can do a whole episode on drama. So if you guys want a whole podcast episode on drama, then Bert could talk about it I think all day. We could talk about so, gossip all day long about shit like that. I have that. no oh interest in that. I'll just turn yeah. my mic off and go home. I know, whatever. But you can talk about it. It's stupid. the Bert show. The You're Bert st- drama show. And people will love it. I know. I, they probably will, but I, people gonna, would, gotta, people would understand say. a lot of stuff. Anyway. I, I think so. Anyway, But uh, that's good info, Scott. I... I appreciate it. Not a problem. And the blowout's a cool event. Really like it. I love it to death. But you know the worst part about the blowout, and I mean this in the best way possible, it gets dark at 5 o'clock because it's in December. Right. Okay, so then we party from like 5 o'clock until like midnight. But at at an event like Urcha, it gets dark at 8 or 9, so you don't really start partying until like 9 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. And so the hangover is just so much worse (laughs) and the freaking blowout. That's all I got to say. I kind of agree. Yeah. I think your shin would agree. More hours of partying than flying. Yeah. yeah, it really is. Actually. Yeah, there's more hours to party than there are to fly. Yeah, especially so. if you're the kind of person... I mean, Scott and I don't freaking sleep in because we're kind of running the event in most most years. I mean, Scott didn't do a whole lot this last year because now we have a new club president. But, you know, Scott's done a lot in previous years and I, you know, I kind of have to be there most years. This last year, I kind of relaxed, but what I'm getting at is, you know, we would be at the field at 7.30 or whatever... And you would be slipping in like huh? an asshole till like no, eleven. No, yeah. this is what no, you ready? This is my morning routine. Yeah. This Even year. Scott agrees with me. Are you ready? Yeah. My morning, or you have to babysit my... the people that are staying over. You have exactly. to that's the problem. Oh, oh exactly. Yeah. My morning routine this year was freaking Nick Johnson, the commentator. He walk outside. Oh mate, I'm gonna have a fag, mate. Okay, whatever. So he goes outside, <laughs> have a cigarette. Guess what? Door wide You're open. A, don't leave the door, door open. wide open. The cat's out and the dog's chasing the cat. And it's just a circus. Like Nick. Come on. So that was my morning routine for the for the blowout. But anyway, I digress. So what do you think, Bobby, about the different uh the differences between events in the US versus what where you've been to outside the US? Uh so we've first I guess to uh, backtrack, we've we've had the privilege to leave yeah. the US and go to events. I mean, and- we've we've we both attended events. Um I've attended events at every continent except for Antarctica. And I think this is important because it's not only kind of showing the U.S. guys that are listening to us what the differences are, but it's also showing the guys that are from overseas what the differences are. Sure. And I had an interesting conversation with somebody from the U.K. literally this morning about that, and I'll get into that later. But what do you think are the main differences? Right. There? So I, I, as I was saying before you asked the question again, as I was saying, so we've had the privilege to travel like everywhere, and it's been absolutely awesome. So I kind of thank everybody for their support with that. But the biggest thing I've noticed is that the events that they bring us to in overseas would just be big. They would have to be. So there'd be big respectively, right? So they might might be a little event, or it might be an event in Costa Rica, right, where the population isn't that big, but you'd get hundreds of people to turn out, spectators and stuff. And uh, and so that they'd kind of have to have a big event in order to afford the funds to bring us over or something. And I guess that's the other big thing is that events overseas have way more spectators. People, it's more of a spectator event. They've bussed people in before in like Thailand. They were bussing kids in. It was crazy. Yeah. So would you agree? Yeah, big point. Uh, events in Asia, I wouldn't say all of Asia, but China... Um, in Asia in general, for sure, they you see a lot more spectators. Events in some parts of Europe, uh, yeah. depending on where in Europe and how the event's organized and who runs the event, have far more spectators. Like Ugo Marquez's event, the owner of uh, Model Sport uh, in Switzerland, his event used to bring in 10,000 spectators crazy. in Zurich, Switzerland. So you see a lot more involvement. Like when you walk in, you're like, holy crap, this is huge. Yeah. 
U.S., not even close. U.S. is more about the pilots, less about the spectators. Yeah, which is good, cause, but in the U.S. you see a lot more pilots flying, the pilots giving each other shit, like in a good way, pushing each other to fly. But in overseas, it was a lot more like demo exhibition. Because yes. I remember um, the distributor at the time in Korea was telling me that the public doesn't understand, like a pub, they don't understand like people just going out to fly. They want to see people doing demos. They want to see people flying to music. They want to see a competition. Like that's what they understand. So in the U.S., we don't have that so much. I mean, we do it at competitions, but uh, but overseas it was always a bigger event with a lot of spectators, and you would always have one guy bringing us over, which was great. Yeah. You know, but but the poor guy, he'd have all this responsibility of keeping an eye on us while we're trying to, uh, you know, wreak and cause havoc. So it was the, fun. the other thing I noticed is, uh, uh, especially in Europe, uh, most events are competition oriented. Um, there's some these days that are maybe not, but for the most part, like you go to Weston Park in the UK right. for Helifest, or you go to um, Rotor Live, Rotor Live, or you, well, Rotor Live is demos, but. You go to um, a lot of these events, like the events in Venlo, and mm-hmm. and you know uh, you have the what was the the brothers that used to put together the oh, zone. The zone. Um, a lot of these events are competition oriented, meaning you go there and there's a competition, and if you want to just fly for fun, there's not so much room for that. In the U.S., uh, even though of course there's events in Europe that are more fun fly oriented, but I think in the U.S. is definitely for sure more fun fly oriented. Period. Yeah. Um, ninety nine point nine nine percent, like almost every single event in the United States, is just a fun fly. You go out there, you bring your stuff, you fly, you have fun, you go home. There's no structure, there's no competition. You, like you said, you give, you, you pilots give each other shit about the flying, or they hang out, they stand out together at the fly line to fly together. There's not that structured like okay, like there's a competition we're yeah, exactly. judging you. That's more typical of Europe, especially the UK. It's really big into that. I think so. I, yeah. That's a really good point. In, yeah. in the US, we had just one big heli competition, and that was XFC. And that was and that really was it. Huge for years, and I don't think they're doing it. We had year. um, uh, a line had the Vegas Cup, Las Vegas Cup uh, for, that was sponsored years, yeah. by a line for, for four years. That was pretty big. I think maybe three years or four years, and then it went away. Um, there were some micro helicopter indoor stuff during the winter that right. was really not a big competition, but really XFC for big competition, the only big one. Really. Yeah, and then was the it? one at Urcha, but, but that was just like a one hour it, competition. I mean, yeah, the, it was it was but, a competition, but, but it doesn't really it count because it was part of a fun fly. Sure. It, was, it was not the purpose of the event. Sure, so, I yeah. I agree, and I yeah. I uh, I kind of miss the competition days a little, but not. Not all that much. We'll have to do an episode about that. We'll do a podcast about competitions because Bert and I competed for a while. Yeah. And that's its own pain in the ass. So do you give a shit, Scott, about going to fun flies or are you just done with that? No, I yeah. like fun flies. Do you? Uh, the only problem with the uh, fun flies in the United States of America? Yeah. In Europe? They yeah. have naked ladies. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. The body painted. Maybe not naked, the body but like... Painted. Yeah, body painted. Yeah. You came up to Urcha, right, Scott? Yeah. So what do you think of Urcha? Oh, this is good. So uh, you went how many years? Uh, three. Three. three years. Okay. The f- explain Urcha to someone who's never been. We've been so long that it, it's we don't know. So explain. From horizon to horizon, helicopters, people, everybody having a great time. Did you fly there ever? Or Actually, you... I flew once. You flew. Yeah. I like... was a little nervous because I don't fly very good, but I gave I gave it to try. And. And it was good. It was good I didn't flight. put it in. I didn't hit anybody, so it was good. That's fine. And there's golf carts everywhere. Yep, for rent. Uh, everything, food, you name it, it's there. I See, like that. I I would. Wouldn't you agree, Scott? And I'm sure you you would, Bobby. That if somebody wanted, if if you had a budget to go to an event, if you had say fifteen hundred bucks, you're gonna spend four hundred dollar ticket, three hundred dollar car rental, four hundred dollar hotel, five hundred dollar meals, whatever. If you had that kind of money to spend on an, on traveling to an event, maybe bring the wife and have some nice dinner the whole out. Family, and definitely. Wouldn't as far as an event, I I don't want to I don't want to pitch the blowout because it's my event. But as far as an event, don't you think Urcha for sure would be number one if you're into helicopters? It without, must to do at least once. At least once, definitely. And I would say number two would be OHB. And 
And the good sales pitch for OHB <laughs> for your wife or wives Disney. would be Disney World. Universal. Universal Studios. Everything. SeaWorld. All the yeah. attractions we have in Central Florida, you can bring your wife, your kids, and they can drive just at your wife as a second driver to your rental car and she drops you off at the field yep you fly all day and you fly all day she takes the kids to some they don't even need to go to disney you can go to disney you can spend five days you can take three days to disney and go to blowout only the main day which is saturday right mm-hmm. and bring your family too to the blowout it's just a great destination that's why i give people the 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 encourage people to come blow up, blow up because it's a great event it's a big event it's like a miniature urcha i guess you could call it but there's so much stuff to do around orlando no offense to indiana it's a beautiful state i have a lot of friends from indiana wait are you saying that muncie indiana doesn't have as much to offer uh, unfortunately it doesn't have orlando shit to offer. florida <laughs> and and again nothing against indiana oh, we have good friends goodness. to live there i love them all yeah but <laughs> you, it's very hard to pitch to your wife hey honey let's go to muncie indiana in it's august fancy. But if you live up north in Boston or somewhere where it gets cold, Chicago, I don't know, Detroit or whatever, Washington State, you can pitch to your wife, hey, honey, let's go to Orlando, Florida for five days, you know? That's good. Uh-oh. But and, and on the flip side, though, so we're talking big events, but for big events, as, as fun as the blowout is, because it really is, I have a blast. Urcha is like on another level. Oh, Urcha is like incredible. It's, yes. I have to say it's the most fun I have all year. It really is. You would, get to see so many people, so many that you get to catch up with everybody at once. Would you agree with me that in, in a scale from one to 10 in, t- in terms of the number of pilots and the, the amount of exi- excitement and the stuff that you get to see and to get to do when it comes to helicopters in themselves in itself, Urcha from one to 10 is like a 10, right? Yep. And to me, like OHB is like a six. And then everything else is like a two. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not kidding. Like to me. It's hard, this- it's hard to say because I, I can't put a number on it because, for example, um, our good friends, uh, the Stacys, Kyle, Ray, Kyle, Stacy up in New York had the Rochester event in August, mm-hmm. September, I forget. And you, I mean, you used to have it. And that was one of the most fun events of the year. And that was a pretty small event with I agree. three flight stations. I agree. So I can't no. put a number on it. But like, no. Urcha's like, great. Urcha's like going to see Kiss. I mean, you got the fireworks, you got everything. Yeah, but, but not to say that seeing a band in a little club isn't bad. But that's what we talked about in the beginning of the podcast where we were start. We were talked about how much fun these little events are. I'm not talking about the amount of fun you have because I do agree and arguably like the Stacy's event down, uh, up in, in New York State, upstate New York, Rochester was an incredible time for so many years. And the night show with the fireworks was like second to Urcha, literally. I mean, that was it. There was nothing else that could touch it. It was a huge, excellent time. But in terms of like the amount of sponsors that you get and the sponsor tents and the pro pilots and the overall can't attendance. Even, yeah, can't even compare. I think can't Urcha and OHB, um, even though OHB is nowhere near close to Urcha, the style is similar and they're kind of uh, two of a kind events. And then beyond that, you don't have anything really quite like that. Nah, nothing, not nothing la- even close. Not laid nothing out in close. that type of format with those kinds of people coming. And, and I mean, OHB, we had people coming, Scott, right, from... You know, Russia or from all, from all over the world. Yeah, I mean, it's just crazy. You don't see that at Rochester. No offense, I'd love that event. Like you said, it's awesome. Right, but like the level at a smaller is different. Event, you won't see it. Yeah. But the cool thing about Urcha too is that there's something going on all day, every day for a week. Yeah, like in the morning, there's stuff going on. In the afternoon, there's nice seminars. There's demos, power hours. I mean, I, I think Charles Anderson and crew have done an amazing job running the urcha jamboree because that's just that event is just on another level awesome yeah it's just definitely i mean every all the years recently have just kind of blended together because it's just been hysterical like i just laugh my ass off the whole time it's just good you always got a smile yeah good time that's a good event urch is a good event i look forward to that yeah, it is. blowouts blowout itself is is uh I remember the first one, we used to have it at that other little field. Uh, not not little field, big, RCACF. Yeah. On the asphalt runway. That Remote was fun. Control, Radio Control Association, Central Florida. That was fun. That was that had a beautiful backdrop with that, yep. that, the that thing in the background. And But it the parking was a nightmare. That was the only reason why we moved Did, it away from there. Um, and there was a big highway right to the left of it. Did I heard the other day. The, did you hear someone hit 
the highway again. Did you guys hear that? Oh, I didn't know about it again. Again, but it happens. I heard so, someone crashed onto the road. But you know that that four twenty nine. That's called a four fourteen, right? Yeah. That right. highway was not there, Bobby, when we started the blowout in two thousand eight. That's right. It was not. Um, it then was under something. construction, and I think it. Bec- I think they had it ready in two thousand nine or ten. But I think like it could have been ready for the last year we did the blowout, and then we moved away to our club of torches. Right. But Scott, what was the story you told? The story that that club they somebody flew an airplane like just to yeah. make it really quick like yeah. somebody took off or something. Well, it was a big A ten warthog. Yeah, it's forty some thousand dollar aircraft turbine. Wait, wait yep. like scale, right? Like, yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Like a model aircraft. Right. Yeah, okay. it was a model right. aircraft, and right. the man rolls out to the end. He's an awesome pilot. Uh, one motor flames out. Rather than throttling back and letting it roll out, he goes for it, throttles up, tries for I guess a restart. It goes, 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 goes in on 417. 414. 414, yeah. it's the big highway to cross. It went right onto the highway? It, like oh. It bounced off the highway, went into the barricades, and they actually called the fire department because they thought a real aircraft had crashed. Who called? Wow. Some passerby. driver. Or, yeah, some driver saw somewhere. Saw the smoke or whatever. Right. Did wow. it go up in flames? Oh, it went up in flames. It was picturesque. Billowed black smoke. <laughs> it was the, unreal. The problem with that is that that field, it's a gorgeous field, big runway. And if you're standing there flying right to your left, not far, maybe two, two football fields away. Is yeah, uh, like a right. highway where people are going yep. 70 miles an hour. Yep. That sucks. It's not an expressway, like a toll road. You have to pay money to go through that right. freaking Man, road. Man, yeah. that sucks because that's just, yeah. But the, the blowout was there, and I remember it being kind of small starting off. I was just a college kid, and, and the best part Actually, about the blowout was that I would reschedule my exams to like t- two days. So I'd do everything two days and get done just in time for the blowout, and I'd drive down and celebrate not failing. Actually, uh, first year we had 130 pilots. That's a big event. That was 2008, which was unheard of for an event that size back then. And then we jumped very quickly to over 200, and we've been hovering in the 200 range ever since. Our busiest year, I can't remember if it was 12 or 13, we had 355 pilots, almost twice as many as we had uh, last year. I think last year we're close to two. I don't remember exactly. I mean, it's gone down certainly, but we're, we've still, we've, we've always maintained an average of 200 ever since. So that's cool. I wonder, I wonder what the other big events are right now. Helis, other big heli events right now in the U S besides Urcha and the blowout. The only one that I've been to that I know has been notice, noticeably large has been the one in Virginia, um, run yeah, by Casey Campbell up in, uh, uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia, which is a little bit south of, I think, or a little bit north of, uh, a little bit south of DC. Sorry. Um, yep. Good remember, event. Great I can't event. remember the city that's Fredericksburg, Fredericksburg yeah, but I can't remember a city that's south of it. It's a big city. I can't remember right now. I don't. But anyway, a um, hundred and a uh, hundred plus, a hundred plus. I don't know the details if it's one fifty or whatever, one twenty, one thirty, but a hundred plus pilots. Nice um, for the spring. He does a spring thing called the spring fling, and it's generally March, April, somewhere in there. And he does another one for the fall. And they're great people. They're like good old boys, men. They own like three hundred fifty acres uh, in Virginia, and they have a huge flying field with like facilities. <laughs> and it's just a, it's good, a, cool old it's yeah, a good old time. It's a good old time. And if you have an ATV. You can take it there, and you can take it down the trails in this big ass property. And Casey will will show you <laughs> uh, show you the way. show you the way. That's cool. So let's talk to people about what to expect. Uh, I'm sure we have listeners that have never been to an event. So never ever. The intimidation factor. What to expect. What to do. Uh, so what do you think? The intimidation factor I hear is pretty big. It's um, gigantic. Yeah, what? but I never tell us why. It's called like I don't like. To what? Only because you got people to the left, you got people to the right, and if you're not really in a comp, you guys are so good you don't understand. If you lose it, you could be over your neighbor's head in a blink of an eye. This is true. You got yeah. a little box to stay in. That's a lot to a, I, a beginner, you know? I All I can say a beginner, when you get it up, get it out in front of you, way out front. That's a good piece of advice. I like yeah. that. I would just say to a beginner, if you've never been to an event, I mean, uh, of course, hopefully when you get to the event, there's music and food and lots of pilots flying and everything. The biggest thing I would say is don't be afraid to go mix it up with the best pilots there. 
Like if if there's a really good pilot there, go watch him. Go stand right as close as you can and watch him, and go fly right after him. Because I remember seeing when I was first starting that like I would see the top guys at the time, Alan Zabo or Curtis Youngblood or mm-hmm. Marcus Kim, just completely lay it down, and then I'd be like, okay, now I'm really excited to fly. So I go a few flight stations over or whatever and do my own version of as best as I could, front flips or a TikTok here and there, and and I would just say, go mix it up. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I agree. Don't be scared. Yeah, um, everybody will help. Everybody. Yeah, and, and no one cares too. Like if you're like a top pilot watching a new guy, we want to see you succeed. Like right. we don't. Oh, look at that guy. He just has training gear. Screw it. Go fly. Most guys, I would say, almost every single guy out there is gonna enjoy helping you out and seeing you succeed. Like Bobby said, and just don't be afraid to go out there. And like if you're really uncomfortable because you're just a total newbie and you're just hovering and you want to hover your helicopter. Just walk out there to the registration booth. They're going to have some kind of registration yeah. crew and talk to some of those guys or the CD of the event and say, listen, I suck. I'm a newbie. Where can I go hover? And they'll help you. Like, they'll they'll tell you, hey, you know, if you're not comfortable, go to that fly station. Like, at the blowout, we always have a fly station at the very end of the field where people, like, can hover or whatever. Like, Which is great. Yeah, yeah. we don't do it every year because sometimes it depends on how we lay out the field. But a lot of times... You will find a flight station that is safe if you want to stay away and kind of be low key and you don't want to be bothered. A lot of times if you bring a friend, it's even better because you guys can help each other and you can like feed off of each other and like watch for each other. But Scott nailed it. If 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 you're beyond just hovering and you're just doing like four flight maybe flips and rolls and you're not totally hundred percent comfortable with the heli, when you take off, just push the heli, just fly. Like, fly away. Like, fly back. Right. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out away from you. And, like, the chances of hitting yourself or hitting somebody else or hitting your next helicopter is going to be slim to none. Most of the guys are watching for the people out there. If there's a a, uh, mid-air collision, you know, hey, I hate to say it, but shit happens. happens. It happens. Have you you mid-aired at a fun fly? I never have, but I've seen some spectacular shit. There was a good one at the blowout this Last year. Best year. one I've seen. Yep. It was two Logo 700s, and they came together. Like, they came together with, like, upward velocity, and it just fireball. It was just fireworks. It just rained just shit helicopter. everywhere. Yep. That's Paul Andrioli and another guy. I, look it up. Look up Paul Andrioli on YouTube. I bet you he'll be on there. Nice job, Paul. Be. He did really good. But, uh, yeah, I would just say, like, if you want to go fly, just fly, man. Because a lot of people, even you, Scott, you're like, I'm not going to fly. Look at all you good pilots fly. I'm like, fuck that. Go fly, man. Yeah, you got to. I, I mean, seriously. So, I, I, with, without a doubt. And then as, as far as, uh, Bert, maybe you could tell us what to bring. What do you bring to a fun fly? What is the one thing you can't live without? Before I say that, the most spectacular, like, the most spectacular, like, <laughs> you probably missed this, Bobby. The uh, Nitter collision was um, a Robert Robert Gorham. Gorham. Oh, when um, he met Eric Kyle's. He met Eric Kyle, Stacy's Goblin at Urcha into some guy's T Rex, and that was like that was freaking bad. And we were standing, uh, we were hanging with uh, Jeff, Jeff Dunham. Dunham. Jeff Dunham was there, and Robert uh, uh, Robert Robert was uh, was flying Kyle's helicopter, and like this, I think he just crossed the other side. I don't know if it was Robert's fault or whomever. Exploded. Doesn't matter. They're running to each other. That was spectacular. That was spectacular. Nice so job. anyway, back to your question: What yes. to bring? What do you bring? What can you not? What is? And, and then on top of that, what is the one thing you can't live without at a fun fly? You need some adult beverages. Really. Yeah. How about you, Scott? Yeah, on the sly. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah, a, no, lot of, a lot of city municipalities, you can't. Won't allow it, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's Bad true. deal. Yeah, that's fair enough. No, I mean, I think uh, it depends on how far you want to take it. You know what I mean? Like, back in my day, I was, and I'm sure you were at this, the, the, kind of the same as I was, Bobby. Like, we'd go to an event, and if we crashed, we would fix that son of a bitch until oh, we got yeah. it flying again. Absolutely. Um, nowadays, like, honestly, like, not even now, but, like, two, three, four years into it, I just got to the point where, like, you know what? I'm bringing three helis. I crash one, and I throw it in the back of the truck, and then, or, you know, back in the suitcase. Right. And I'll fly whatever I have left, because I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to spend my time wrenching at the field when I could just be having fun with people. Um, so, whatever rocks your boat, I mean, the bare minimum, obviously, is... Floats your boat. 
rocks your boat. No, here in the U.S. we say what in no, English. In English, I know whatever. you speak like five languages. That's great. Well, fuck off. But it's floats your boat. Okay, whatever floats <laughs> your boat. Floats. Floats. Whatever rocks yeah, yeah, yeah. your boat. No, Rock. no. Yeah, rocket baby. Floats your boat. Anyway, um, <laughs> tool. <laughs> you want to bring? You know, you want to bring some tools because you want to wrench. Then bring the tools. Bring your basic toolkit. Bring your you know, it, it really depends also, Bobby, on whether you're driving to this place or you're flying. You know, I would say if you're driving because you're going to a little event or, you, or a big event, whatever, that's within a few hours, you're just driving. Bring as much as you can. Bring every freaking thing yeah. in your toolbox. Bring Everything ex- you got. Yeah, bring parts, bring tools. Extension bring cords. Double-sided tape, flashlights. extension cord, flashlights. Bring your generator and extension, uh, uh, your chargers and charging leads. Yeah, up to Wazoo to make sure that you have all your charging connectors that you need for all your batteries. And then and, on top of all that, and, once you get there, fly. You yeah. know, you know how many people like bring all that shit that don't even. And that'll fly. fly, yeah. But if you're traveling uh, by plane, which would be the next thing I want to talk about, uh-huh. what to bring? Uh, well, again, it depends on how much you're packing. So, how would you pack your stuff if you are flying by plane, Bobby? So, if I was flying to plane, I would always bring two machines at least. Usually two. Two is a good number. If you bury, what else do you bring? Yeah. So you bring the machines. Let's say I'm taking a nitro and an electric, just mm-hmm. so that we can be fair. So nitro first, I always suck the fuel out, take the fuel tank out, put it in a different case. So I have like a golf case, travel case. And, 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 and to kind of preface this, we did a whole episode on Smack Talk that you guys might want to look at. Yeah. I think it was seven or something. I can't remember, but it's called, called traveling. Las Vegas. Las no, Vegas. Well, we did one in Vegas, but then we did, we did a whole one on travel. Oh, you're right. You're right. So take a look at those. We explain all this in way more detail, but, uh, we use golf cases or like a big Pelican case or an SKB case and have that with foam or zip ties or whatever. So we secure the heli, but whenever I do nitro, pull the tank out of the nitro, clean it really well. Don't let any alcohol be in there. And then usually I arrange fuel at the field. Um, I'll bring a starter if I have the room. Um, So that's really nitro covered. And then uh, for electric, you bring your batteries. You carry them on now. Carry them on is how they want you to do it. Carry them on. Bring a charger and spare parts. A lot of times TSA will give some people trouble for carrying batteries even when you carry on. Uh, Most of the time they won't, but sometimes they will. And when they do, if they give you trouble and you're leaving your home airport and you have somebody that dropped you off you can give those people the batteries you're going to be without batteries when you get to your destination but at least you don't lose your batteries on the way back if they don't want you to take them you're pretty screwed at that point you have to dispose of the batteries or miss your flight and go arrange something so if you want to be ultra ultra careful or like super safe about this take your batteries pack them in a nice box lots of bubble wrap yada 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 Ship them to your hotel room ahead of time. Uh, make sure ground. you ship ground. Yep. Don't ship air. Don't do United States Postal Service because a lot of the shipments with USPS priority mail go by air. So don't do that. Right. Do FedEx ground or UPS ground and ship them to your hotel ahead of time. Uh, agreed. And then run into a, a what? Like a Kinko's or a, yeah, well, like what's a it called? Center. Like a shipping center, like a you know a UPS store. Uh, before you head to the airport and ship them back to yourself, yeah, and I think that's the way to it, that's the way to do it. It's sure. not as cheap. It's not. It costs you a little more money, but it's a much safer way to do it. You know, you don't have to deal with uh, TSA. They're not going to bother you. There's not going to be any questions about anything. Now, like you were saying, Bobby, with the nitro engine, um, I remember back in the day, a lot of people would take the fuel tank out of the helicopter. I they'll, always do it. Yeah. They'll wash it real well, and then they would put it, like, somewhere else. Like, so your heli's... I put it in my clothes bag, in, in a Ziploc bag. Yeah, or something like that. And that or way your... they don't see the it... tank. Because when they see the tank, they get scared. Exactly. But one time, I swear to God, I left Korea. We were flying clear fuel over there. I flew back with an entire full tank of fuel. I've done that mistake more than once. <laughs> I didn't I... know it was full. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I... it, it can be done. I did that coming back from New Zealand one time. Uh, no, Australia. Like, the time we went to Australia, I didn't have time. We were running late, late to the airport or something, and I had, like, half a tank of fuel. Classic. And I took the chance, and it worked. Yeah. But you don't want to do that. You want to... Yeah, with, with Nitro, it's really not that bad. I, it, the, the question they always ask, does this run off gasoline? No, it doesn't. And then it's fine. I, so I, I've never had a problem with Nitro. I don't know the exact story specifics as, as to what the law says today but i know back in the day it had to do with internal combustion engines right if you had an internal combustion engine you, you could not fly with it you could not take it on board right um 
so technically a nitro engine is, is an internal combustion engine. However, back in the day, and I, again, I don't know if the law, you might need to research it, but I know we, we haven't had any issues traveling lately, even with it, but nope. back in the day, it could, you could have, you could have traveled with internal combustion engine as long as it had never been fired before. In other words, it was a brand new engine, then it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> and I think the stipulation had more to do with the the gas, like you said, the the, right. the, the the fuel, you know, that that was either in a fuel tank or deposited in the carburetor or in the injectors right. or no whatever. Like, residue. No, no residue. So as long as you take the tank out and you flush the tank and the fuel lines and you pull the fuel lines out of the tank and you clean it real well with alcohol and you wrap it in some T-shirt and throw it in your backpack or throw it in a... They're not going to be able to put two and two together. It's not going to be mounted in your helicopter. They're not going to care. Yeah, now, undoubtedly, tra- traveling with electric is easier because, again, you ship your batteries ahead of time, and that's it. Right. I, I do remember one time we were in 3D Masters, and I needed to get my batteries home. And everyone and I left a day later, and everyone was saying, hey, don't carry your battery. Don't even bring your batteries to the airport because they're getting rejected. Like, people couldn't bring them. On. I, don't, I forget what year it was, where we were coming from. So I decided to ship it home because I'm yeah. like, oh, this will be safer. I swear to God. I get the batteries like mm, five, six days later at my house. And I walk up to the package outside and I'm like, uh, really? And it smelled sweet. I'm like, this is weird. Before I even opened the box, I carefully opened the box. Swear to God, Customs opened the lithium cell in my battery. They cut it open with a razor blade. Unbelievable. Because they thought it was drugs wow. or something. So I can't believe it didn't explode in their hands or whatever. So after seeing the kind of stupid shit the customs will do. Don't ship them internationally. If you or if you do, maybe make sure you declare it. This don't, was years ago. This was do, like ten years ago. Don't do so, international. Don't do international lipo. It's against the law. Yeah, it's the against, laws are so different now, though. But it, at the time, it wasn't really illegal. It, it is it against kinda, the law. Like uh, you know, lipo manufacturers have to ship by sea. It's against the law. Wow, it has to travel by ground or has to travel by sea, not by air. So don't ship by air any lipo. Yeah, but um, but traveling to it. So to come around, so traveling to events, uh, just make sure you bring your machines, bring some spare parts, bring. Uh, th- this is adorable. This is like a fatherly figure, I guess. You bring some warm clothes and bring some like hot clothes. Like the weather's never the freaking same. Yeah, I remember being in events, freezing my balls off. We have to go to freaking Walmart yeah. and buy shit. So don't be like, and use that as padding. Pro tip, right? You know, use I that as little, padding for your machine. I had one of those little pouches that you can buy at Walmart where you put your toothbrush and your toothpaste and all that stupid stuff. Yeah. And that's where I put my tools. And I just put enough tools to get me by. I mean, yep. almost 90% of everything I needed, I just didn't have all the extra little deep, you know, things that you might need. But 90% of what I needed, um, that's all you need to do. Just get a little, you know, tool bag and throw it in there. Um, like Bobby said before, if you're traveling with with nitro, bring your starter. Although, as you go to an event, I'm sure everybody would be more than happy. Anybody there would be more than happy to let you bor- bor- borrow their starter. You don't need to. But make sure there's people flying nitro there. Yeah, well, there will be. <laughs> like it's kind of nitro's kind of dead, but it's still around. It's still around, no doubt. Some days it's not at our at our club, so I. I have to bring my starter. Same with chargers. Like a lot of people think, yeah. well, if I want to, you know, I want to travel to Orlando and, I'm, you know, they're coming from California or yeah. New York or whatever. And they're afraid, you know, they, how do I bring the charger? Don't even worry about it. Somebody will let you borrow yeah, their be- charger to charge the battery. Agreed. Um, or buy a cheap, what I used to do is I just had a cheap charger that wasn't part of like a charging case. It was just a charger. And I would just take the freaking charger and throw it in my suitcase with some, like, alligator clips. And when I got there, I took my car rental, I popped the hood, I clipped the freaking alligator clips to my car battery, and I charged that that way. Yep. And you can't charge a lot, but, you know, still will get you by through the day. The, the When you go to an event, don't expect to fly 20 flights a day. For sure. Expect to go there mostly to learn and to see other people fly. And you can obviously get a handful of flights, too, just uh, to add to the enjoyment, you know. No doubt. And, you know, you you just triggered my memory on something, too. Another little pro tip, I guess you could say. Uh, Throughout the years, we've been flying to events and staying in hotels, renting cars. We've seen I've seen a lot of cars get broken into and a lot of shit stolen. Uh, Alan Zabo, he and his brother had his Raptor stolen in England. Um, World of Heli. In Italy, wasn't that in Italy? 
Their van was broken into yeah. one time. They stole passports, laptops. They stole everything. So here's my recommendation. If you're just a single pilot or you and a buddy flying to an event, what I always do is I try to get a car with a big trunk. And as as crazy as it looks, so far the best car I've had for a rental is a Chevy Impala. I swear to God. The trunk is bigger than the freaking interior. And you can put five helicopters in there fully built and the trunk closes, no one ever sees it. So that's just be careful of that. Or bring your helis inside at night, yeah, especially I've, when you're in the road on a hotel. We've seen so many your shit your freaking helis got stolen yeah. at the IHOP, your car yeah. was smashed. So I mean yeah, be careful about that. Yeah, if you rent like an SUV type vehicle, like just take your helis to your room every night. Yeah. Like don't leave them behind. It's not worth it. Like yep. You obviously don't know the area because you're traveling there. It's not your neck of the woods. It's not a place you're comfortable with. You know, sometimes we go to these awesome countries. Like, I mean, Italy's like one of the best countries in the world. Same as Germany. Yep. But you never know. Same as the U.S. But you know, guys, how it goes. Like, you never know the neighborhood. It All it takes is just that little bat neighborhood, bat time, you know, bat place at the, at the you know, wrong place at the wrong time. And that's it. So yeah, you don't gotta risk be, it. Got to be careful it. with that. But uh, so, well, did we check everything cool. off your little list there? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Nice. Well, hopefully, we gave you guys a detailed, uh, some insight into events. What do you think, Scott? Any more? Any more? Th- no great insight here. Be safe. Have fun. I like that. And I want to acknowledge uh, Scott for all the help he's given us at the blowout for the last uh, uh, so many years. Of course, no problem. And I also have to acknowledge our new club president, Mister Steve. Irish Steve. Steve Bovenizer for having helped us tremendously on this last blowout as well. So we've had a great deal with our club. Uh, We've had some really good club precedents uh, in the last few years. And uh, do you miss being the club president or you just a a little bit? I mean, Steve's doing a good job. I'm good with it. But you don't you miss the drama? No, Uh, no, I don't miss the drama, but I don't know. I miss a little bit of it. Yeah. Well, you miss the drama. Uh, I don't have any drama in my life. It's awesome. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm you miss it. I know you miss it. I know you. I miss, I'm missing a drink. Right oh, now. my God. This freaking guy. All right. Well, anyway, we thank you guys for listening to this uh, this podcast. We had a good time with this one. So once again, hit us up on uh, Facebook, Instagram, the web, whatever. Just find yeah. us. Facebook.com. Look up Burt Kammer. Look up Bobby Watts. It's pretty easy. Yeah, or Facebook.com um, slash MacTalkRC. Oh, the other thing, too, I've seen. If you guys listen to this, if you made it this far and, and you like it, if you could go to our... Um, if you could go to our podcast on iTunes, for example. I think mm-hmm. most people listen on iTunes. Um, iTunes or whatever it may be. Leave some feedback. Give us stars. You can give us like five stars. Give us one star if you want. Just leave some feedback. Because we'd like to see that. It's a good metric of seeing how many people we're actually reaching. And also, like, uh, Facebook.com. Th- this would be awesome, Bobby. Facebook.com slash SmackTalkRC. Yes. Go in there and just make a post on uh, not a private message. I think we have that disabled because we couldn't really keep up with that. Right. But make a post on our page, like, just a visitor post. And give us a topic on what you would like for us to talk exactly. about because that helps exactly. us tremendously to come up with ideas for you guys yeah we're not asking for a cent just go in and just write some shit tell us what you want to hear yeah tell us what you want to hear. and if you do want the drama episode then bert will bring you as the rotor turns with bert camera yeah <laughs> sounds good to me we'll right, bring cool. in ray Morey and other people that can contribute to that and make yeah. it spice it up yeah for sure all right all right thank you guys we'll uh we'll see you next time thank you thank you scott too.